Hello, hello, all of you beautiful beings. Welcome to Reclaim the Podcast. This is a really big deal. This is episode 100, and I could not think of a better way to celebrate episode 100 than the kickoff of worthiness season. People's worthiness season is here. It's here. I hinted at it last week. This is here. Now, if you're new to these parts, you may be thinking, what is worthiness season? Well, worthiness season is the time where I talk a lot about worthiness because um, worthiness is a subject that I have studied and spent my life devoted to understanding. And I've created a whole group program around everything I know about worthiness called Worthy Women Arise. And in celebration of this incredible group program that I put together twice a year, I like to spend some time talking about worthiness, talking about the different ways that we can start to internalize a deep sense of worth over just this whole like, believe in yourself, you are worthy narrative. And so to kick off worthiness season and in celebration of doors opening for Worthy Women Rise next week, February 12th. And also for the fact that we are in episode 100, we are kicking off something called 10 Days of Worth. 10 Days of Worth. What is 10 Days of Worth? Okay, so uh, about two years ago, I created a Facebook, a series of Facebook Lives. I did 21 Days of Facebook Lives and I called 21 Days of Worth. So for 21 days, I talked about all sorts of different aspects and elements of worth. I talked about perfectionism and comparitis and burnout and making money. I talked about the inner critic. I talked about the ways that we play small and keep ourselves small and what we can fucking do about it. Um, 21 Days of Worth was a beautiful experiment of not only showing up publicly for 21 days via Facebook Lives, I wanted to see if I can do it, but also in delivering some of my best content and best info that I've gained over the years of doing the research of worthiness to support you on your worthiness journey. And so I was going through my files and I realized that I have this whole archive of amazing 21 videos that needs to be out into the world and it's not out into the world. And so I've decided to combine the videos so each of the 10 Days of Worth podcast episodes will include two videos from that 21 Days of Worth Facebook Live series. So all of that information is going to come onto the podcast. Doesn't that sound wonderful? I'm really excited about this because if I know anything about you who is listening to this podcast is that the worthiness wound plays a role in your life, whether it may be an overt knowing or a subtle knowing, odds are there's a worthiness wound there. I know this because almost every single woman I've interacted with I get a sense that there's a worthiness wound at play. The worthiness wound says that I'm inadequate. There's something deeply broken with me. I don't know enough to be doing what I want to do. I'm not good enough to be getting into the relationships that I want to be getting into. I shouldn't go after that because there's something wrong here, right? Does that feel familiar to you? Because it certainly has been familiar to me. The worthiness wound is something that I've explored deeply because I carry one and I've been wanting to know What is the key to dismantling it? How can I make sure to not get in my own way? This has been critical to my rise in entrepreneurship, to running my business successfully um, for uh, five years now, full time, uh, 10 years part time, uh, making money, doing what I love, putting myself out there on podcasts and interviews and Facebook lives and uh, stages and TV. I mean, I've been interviewed on TV. I've been on stages all over the world. It's like all of that. Um, came from deep work of attending to and healing to and addressing my worthiness wound. And I want to uh, dissect everything that I've learned, again, not just my own journey, but the journey of hundreds of women who have come before you have navigated their worthiness wound. I take all of that info and I'm dropping it here to you for 10 days, okay? 10 days, not including the weekend. So there'll be four episodes this week five next week, and one the following week. 
I'm really excited about this, y'all. This is really, really beautiful things, beautiful things that I'm I'm excited to be sharing about with you. Um, and so without further ado, let's just get into it. Um, today, you're going to be listening to day one and day two um, of the Facebook Live series that I did. Um, there will be a little music between the two, so you can tell that there is a shift between day one and day two. I cannot wait to hear how this lands for you. Um, so please, please, please go to my Instagram at I am Thais Sky. Let me know how these conversations impact you. Um, the first audio you're going to hear day one, you're going to hear about um, a little bit of my story of navigating my deep sense of unbelonging. I'm going to be talking about the two schools of thought around uh, healing worthiness and the flaws of each one. And I'm going to be talking about what is the worthiness wound. And then in the second audio, you're going to hear why what you focus on grows, has its limitations, how patterns recreate themselves and how we can stop it from running our lives, how the worthiness wound manifested in my life and why I call it the worthiness wound. This is a concept that I've created, this idea of the worthiness wound. And in the second audio, I explore a little bit about why I named it such. All right, go listen. Let me know what you think on Instagram at I am Thais Sky, And I can't wait to can kick off Worthiness season with you all in this episode 100. Welcome to Reclaim, a podcast for women by women on conversations that matter. I am your host, Thais Skye, international speaker, teacher, and a certified life coach currently working to become a licensed psychotherapist in the state of California. Join me here every week as I offer thoughts and interviews on what it means to reclaim your humanness in this messy world. Twenty one days of worth is twenty one days where I'm going to be going on Facebook Live to share with you all my thoughts around worthiness and the worthiness wound, my thoughts on taking up space and self expression, my thoughts on stepping into and accessing and opening up to the innate wild woman that is within all of us. And for those of you who are not familiar with me, my name is Tay Sky. I'm going to be sharing in this video today. Um, an intro to the 21 days of worth, intro to myself, an intro to the project that I've been on for the past uh, six years or so, the worthiness wound. And also, I'm going to be talking about why no one talks about this. You know, like, why does no one talk about worthiness? Like, really not talk about it. So we're going to get to that. Okay. So when I started my journey, of of healing started my journey of self development right started my my journey of understanding myself and understanding my consciousness and understanding who I was and my purpose you know all of the things when I started to awaken um I started to realize that there was a deep sense within me that felt inherently broken that felt inherently inadequate that felt like I didn't belong on this planet And it was only through a few therapy sessions that I realized that I had been carrying this belief with me for a very, very, very long time. This deep sense that I just don't belong. I I shouldn't be taking up space. And the reason why I was going to therapy to begin with was because around that time, I had developed um, a pretty debilitating binge eating disorder where I was consuming food left and right, like unable to control it, unable to... um, have any sort of input or say into what I was eating. Like once I wanted to binge on something, I would fucking binge on something. And that was really scary, as you can imagine, where for so much of my life, I prided myself in exerting control over my life. I prided myself in being able to um, decide what I wanted to do and who I wanted to do and just do it. And so when I was starting to be consumed by binge eating, that scared the shit out of me. And my mom was very worried about me. She took me to a therapist. And in those therapy sessions, I realized that inherently underneath my binging was the sense that I could not take up space. And so that began my healing journey personally. And it took another four or five years for me to actually start doing the work of supporting women through initially it was binge eating and emotional eating and eventually morphed into what I do now, supporting women to really rise up um, and express themselves unapologetically by knowing, trusting, and expressing themselves. Um, 
so I didn't really, I didn't really know what was up. I didn't really have language, but I knew that there was something deeply broken. And so once I started coaching and once I started entering the self-development world um, from a place of not only being a participant, but being a leader, I was, I became fascinated by this idea of worthiness. Like what is worthiness? Like what is it? And why is it that some people don't seem to be phased by whether or not they feel worthy or unworthy. And some people feel like myself, absolutely debilitated by the sense of unworthiness, by the sense that I'm broken and that I don't belong here. Yeah. So it was about a year ago, a year and a half ago, where I started to do serious research. I pulled hundreds of women. I went back through all of my notes from all of my client sessions from the last six years. I went through and poured myself into and trying to understand what is it about worthiness and how can we start to understand what worthiness is so that maybe we can start to feel it, right? Isn't that the whole fucking point for us to start to feel the sense of worth? So why is it that we don't feel it in the first place and how can we start to feel it? And what I found is that there's basically two schools of thought around worthiness. There's the people who don't talk about it at all. They'll say it's important, right? They'll say like, yes, worthiness is important. If you read any self-development book, if you read any book um, around bettering yourself, it talks about how self-worth is critical to doing whatever it is that you want to do, feeling confident, feeling like you can charge your worth, right? Charge your worth, feel like you can um, make um, something of yourself. Every book talks about it, yet no one talks about what exactly is worthiness. So I found that that's one camp of thought, that it's important, but it's just shit in the luck, whether or not you know what it is. Um, And then the other school of thought is you just got to believe in yourself. Like, just do it. Like, just just believe in yourself. Just do it. Like, why aren't you believing in yourself? Here, let's use a mantra. Let's use a visualization. Let's use a few words. Like, you are worthy. And if you repeat it to yourself enough times, then you're going to feel worthy, right? If you just repeat yourself to yourself enough times, I am worthy, I am worthy, I am worthy, then eventually you'll be worthy, just like me. Yay, look at me. I'm worthy. And now you can be worthy, too, by just repeating a few mantras, right? That's the other school of thought that I've seen. You know, you're worthy to get all the clients that you want. Just believe in yourself. Just believe in yourself. I haven't found that to be effective. I haven't found that just by being told to believe in myself, whether it's by a loved one, whether it's by a complete stranger on the internet, I haven't seen that to actually cause any lasting stirs in my heart of worthiness. And that's why I think no one really talks about this stuff is because no one really knows what this stuff is. And so what I find online, what I find in other um, people talking about um, self-development and confidence is that they don't really know how to even address worthiness. And that wasn't enough for me. That wasn't enough for me. So that's when I started to do my research. That's when I started to truly, truly try to comprehend what worthiness is and how we can start to develop an understanding of it so that we can hopefully internalize it, hopefully understand it, right? What I call the difference between mentalizing something, which is, you know it in your mind, you know that you should meditate, you know that you should do all these things, you know that you should, 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 but you don't actually do it, right? That's mentalizing versus you just know, you just do. And that's always been my goal. I don't want to give you more stuff where you should do stuff. I want it to actually internalize into your body so you can embody this knowledge and then you just are different. You don't even have to think that you're different. So in my research um, over the past six years and then more specifically over the past year and a half, I've developed what I call the worthiness wound. And the worthiness wound is a model, an understanding of how we develop this sense of unworthiness within us. And I'm gonna be sharing parts of the model with you all in the next 21 days. um, And we're gonna be dissecting some parts of it and trying to understand how it is that we've developed um, an unworthiness around that specific part of the model. But I want to be clear. I'm not talking about a template. Okay, I can't talk templates. Like, what does that even mean? Like, each human psychology is radically different. And it's very presumptuous of me to believe or to say that, like, I know what can fix you because you're not broken to begin with. And there is no template. Templates don't work. What a model is, is just, it's like, it's like a, an overall um, map. And the specific aspects of your journey are going to look different. But there's some 
greater, um, what am I trying to say, similarities. There are some similarities in all of our journeys. And that's what I put together, are those similarities. And how it affects your life is obviously different. But when we can start to notice these similarities and when we can start to notice the road signs, right, when we can start to notice like, oh, they've been through this, I've been through this, I actually know what this feels like, I know what this is, then we can start to do something about it, right? So my goal is really in fast tracking self-awareness. Because the more that you can start to pinpoint these behavioral um, patterns and you can start to pinpoint the deeper uh, experiences within you that caused you to get to this point where you are now, then you can start to do something about it. Yeah. So that's a little bit about the worthiness wound and a little bit about me. Um, the next 21 days, like I said, we're going to really be painting some cool, broad brushstrokes over what is worthiness and what is not. We're going to explore um, the ways that you can start to internalize like tangible tools for you to develop a deeper sense of worthiness. We're going to be talking about some practical things that we can all start to do to understand what unworthiness really is like. And I want to be careful with my language. And this is why I've hesitated with going Facebook Live. I want to hesitate. I mean, I want to be careful with my language. Language positioning is important. I don't believe that you're deeply inadequate or deeply broken. I think that that's a lie that we've been told. And so our worthiness wound is not an inherent sense of brokenness within each one of us. That's what it's called, right? But you're not inherently broken is what I want to say. Like you may feel it, but you're not it. And so when we address the worthiness wound and we start to learn the tools to heal that sense of un unworthiness within us, it's not healing from a place of you don't have the tools and now I'm going to give you the tools and you're going to be good to go and then you're never going to feel unworthy again. Again, these are promises that I cannot make. What I will be offering are different ways for you to think about your unworthiness, different ways for you to develop a new relationship with yourself so you're not in actual war and battle with a part of yourself. This is why I am so frustrated with an industry that is obsessed with mindset and everything is about mindset. And if you just focus on the right mindset, then all of your problems will go away, right? Mindset is only a small, tiny equation in the greater um, spectrum of healing and becoming better people. It's a tiny, tiny portion. The more important portion is embodiment, is actually learning how to tune into the natural, um, uh, incredibly intelligent language of our physical body. And so when we're only focused on mindset, what happens is we go at war with ourselves. When I tell you that if you want to succeed, let's say you want to make a million dollars, you just have to have the mindset of a millionaire, but you don't currently have the mindset of a millionaire. Most of us, what we tend to do is we tend to judge ourselves, criticize ourselves, shame ourselves, and berate ourselves for not being where we want to be. And so we use this idea of I'm not where I want to be to really hate on ourselves. And then we start an internal battle between your, our idealized self-image, which is where we want to be, and our current predicament, which is clearly very shitty, like clearly we're very unhappy with where we are. And that gap is our inner critic. And so if we focus too much on mindset, what we're only doing is augmenting the power of our inner critic. We live in a society that is very head heavy, very intellect heavy. And we have not developed as a, as a whole, as humans in a whole, I'm not talking about specific individuals, but as a whole, we haven't developed the right attunement to learn how to drop from our head into our other intelligence systems, like our core, our willpower, like our um, throat chakra, like our, our body in general. And with our body comes emotions and intuition and a deeper sense of grounding and presence. So what I want to be focusing on in the next 21 days is, yes, we're going to be talking. So, yes, it's going to be a little head heavy. But my goal is for us to be able to bring it down, bring it down into the body, bring it down into the core of who you are so that we can start to find actual melting of ourselves into our presence. Okay. So that's why I'm obsessed with worthiness really is because I've been, I've been experiencing this all my life and I've been wanting to put names and understandings into the things that I've been experiencing. And if I've been experiencing them, I know other people have been experiencing them and it's been an absolute joy to do this research and to do this work and to really be sharing all of this stuff with you in the next 21 days. Today, we're going to talk about why even talk about unworthiness, 
isn't it just perpetuating it? I briefly mentioned yesterday that I received this, and I see this all the time online, this conversation of why, why can't we just feel worthy, right? Like just feel worthy and believe in your worthiness and stop believing the lies that you're unworthy and move on. And I want to talk about why that's not going to work. <laughs> And so we're going to talk about what will work. And I want to first begin by sharing a story of my own journey of unworthiness. Um, when I um, started uh, college, I was in a long-term or long-distance relationship. And this was my first ever relationship. So I kind of fell really hard for this dude. And the relationship was extremely tumultuous and, and being long distance made it even more tumultuous. And I was also far away from my family. And before I knew it, I found myself binging on anything I could get my hands on. I found myself binging on cookies and pizzas. I would sneak into the dining hall, um, telling them that I forgot something in the dining hall, sneak in, grab handfuls of cookies and put them in my pocket. They had the most amazing oatmeal raisin cookies, but I fucking hate raisins. So I would walk to class dropping the raisins as I go. And I would joke to myself that I would leave a little trail behind, but the cookies would last, you know, the mile walk from where I lived to school, that is how many cookies I had in my, in my pockets. So it was pretty debilitating. You know, I, I didn't feel like I had control over what I put in my mouth. I didn't feel like I could really have a say in what was happening. And what I realized was that that long-term relationship had sprung up within me a lot of feelings of inadequacy and, um, and not belonging and abandonment. So having to navigate what it means to have felt abandoned in childhood and feeling what it means to um, having felt like I never quite belonged. I moved a lot when I was little internationally. I lived in Japan. I lived in Brazil. I lived in the U U.S. I um, had to move away from my entire family in Brazil. So all of these all of these experiences led me to this crux moment in college when everything came crashing down on me in the sense that I realized that I had absolutely no control in my life and that I didn't belong anywhere. And I truly thought it was a dog eat dog world. And if I was going to have to make, if I was going to have space in the world, it's because I fought teeth and nail for it. So that's how I was operating. That was my MO. That was, I was in constant fight or flight uh, mode, believing that I didn't deserve to be here. And so what happens when from childhood into adulthood, we internalize these ideas about who we are is that then we feel like we're constantly fighting. We're constantly reacting. We're constantly in pain. And we develop certain defensive mechanisms, certain ways of being to help us protect ourselves from that deep pain. Some defensive mechanisms could be pushing people away, right? Not letting people near you. Or the minute you sense that someone is going to let you down, you push them away first, right? These are ways that we protect our hearts from feeling abandoned, from triggering up old wounds. But when we don't look at our wounds, when we don't pay, we don't, when we don't pay attention, when we don't know what's, that there's something deeper going on, they're actually running our lives. And that's why at the end of the day, if we're not talking about our worthiness wound, well, our unworthiness is actually running our lives and we'll develop whole defensive mechanisms to make that so. And the problem with defensive mechanisms is that then we perpetuate the same pain that came upon us from childhood, hoping that this time we'll do it differently. I call this recreating childhood wounds. If we just keep, you know, trying, keep developing these offensive mechanisms, then we'll be safe. But what actually happens is we keep bringing on the same type of pain again and again and again. And it can be extremely, extremely painful. And that's what I was realizing. I was realizing that, wait a minute, I thought my problems were about this relationship. But now that relationship is over, I'm in a totally different relationship. And yet the same problems keep coming up. Or I thought that I didn't belong because I lived really far away from school. So once I moved back to Maryland, where my parents lived, then 
I would feel like I belonged and everything would be okay. And yet I still found myself binging. If we don't look at our wounds, they keep running our lives. I like to tell this story. Um, imagine that you're going to a party and you know that your ex-boyfriend is going to be at this party. But you're going to go because you're mature and you're not going to let this person, um, this dude, run your life. So you're going to go. You're going to go to this party. Um, and But, you know, you walk into the party and you're on high alert. You're on high alert. Wherever you see this person, you duck out or you pretend like you're talking to somebody else. Anytime you see him enter the room, you distract yourself or you duck or you try to avoid his gaze so that he doesn't see you. Or maybe you feel all powerful and you go up to him and you like have that in your control, right? That you're going to go up and talk to him. But the entire time in the back of your mind, you're thinking about what is he thinking? What is he thinking? Right? So let's say finally at the end of the night, you leave the party. The question I always ask is who had more control at that party? Who was actually running the show at that party? Was it you or was it your ex-partner? It's your ex-partner because you were doing everything in your control to try to control the situation. So even though you think that you're the bigger person because you attended and you talked to him or whatever, he's actually the one running the show. And the same goes for our wounds. The same goes for the worthiness wound. If we don't look at the specific areas in our lives where our worthiness and unworthiness is coming up, is coming to play, it's going to keep coming up. When I researched and started to understand how unworthiness was manifesting in my life specifically, when I, when I looked back through my childhood and when I tried to dissect and understand what was going on, there were several behavioral patterns at play that were telling me that I had a worthiness wound. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the different ways that the worthiness wound may manifest in your life next week. But I want to share specifically what happened in my life. One of the things that specifically happened in my life was binging, right? Was binging. The other one was copying others. So I would find myself feeling inadequate in my capacity to show up as an entrepreneur, in my capacity to show up as a human being. And so I saw what other people were doing and other people's work was so much better than mine. And so I would copy them. I would copy their work. I would copy their branding. I would copy the way that they did their branding. I would copy their messaging. Right? I would copy. And even if the copy isn't necessarily like verbatim, the energy was there. The energy was their branding, their messaging, their website is on. It's like beautiful, and mine is shit. So I've got to copy them. I've got to uh, copy different elements of their website or different elements of their words. And some of that is okay, right? We're learning, we're navigating a new realm. Let's say the new realm is entrepreneurship and you don't know what a good website looks like. So you draw inspiration from other people. That's okay. But when it's coming from a place of deep wounding, when it's coming from a place of my work is inadequate, then that energy is going to, in many ways, push away the very results that we want. And then we're going to feel even more inadequate because that's how our patterns work, right? And then we feel deeply broken. We feel paralyzed. We feel like we feel shut down. We give up on our dreams. We give up on the things that we want. The other way that um, the worthiness wound manifested specifically in my life was sabotage around money. So I found that I had the same energy around my binging with food as I did with, with spending. I would binge spend. And it came from the energy of, well, you know, everyone says that you have to live a certain lifestyle and you have to believe in yourself. So I'm going to spend money on a $2,500 computer, even though a hundred and a thousand dollar computer would do fine, but I'll spend $2,500 and put it on a credit card because if I work in this beautiful, fancy computer all the time, then I'll manifest a million billion dollars and I'll be happy. And so I was charging my card and, and spending from that same energy of something outside of myself is going to give me some sort of validation that my work is important in the world, that who I am is deserving in the world. But you can see that anything that comes from this energy isn't going to create the ultimate results that we want. It could on some level. It's not black and white. It's not that I'm never going to make a million billion dollars because I have a $2,500 computer. It's that if that energy is running my life, it is somehow going to come out. So, you know, I, I hear the concern that if we look at our worthiness wound, if we talk about unworthiness, then we're perpetuating it. We're growing it because what you focus on grows. And I call complete 
bullshit on that. I have yet to see that if you focus on your shadow, it grows. In fact, if you focus on the things that aren't working, it starts to work. If you focus and give attention and love to the places that are wounded within you, that healing starts to infuse into your life and you find a deeper presence. So, the, you know, we've got to be looking at these uncomfortable things or else we're going to keep finding ourselves in the same spiral. We're not going to find the freedom, liberation, autonomy that we truly desire. How can we become self-expressed women if we're ignoring that voice in our heads that's telling us, wait a minute, there's something deeply wrong? So I have a, a, a crazy perspective on the worthiness wound and wounding in general and healing in general, which is I actually find that the power, the answer to most of our challenges internally come from right that's the the come from the wound come right from that spot so instead of seeing the wound as like a burden that we have to just overcome i actually find that our answers lies within them it's not by putting a band-aid it's by going in and cleaning the wound that's why i love when i named the worthiness wound i named it a wound because i want to get a visceral picture of what happens when we are wounded physically wounded if there's a big gash on our leg what do we do we must attend to it we must clean it stitch it up understand it know how it happened put it together take tender care of it and eventually it heals, but there it leaves a scar. And that scar tells us what happened. It reminds us of who we are. And it's the same thing for the worthiness wound. It's a wounded space within all of us that feels deeply in belonging. And I'm going to talk about the contributors of the worthiness wound. There's societal, there's parental, there's, you know, um, lineage. There's so many um, reasons for why we feel this sense of unbelonging and in my own work, I've seen to be true that if we spend time committed to looking at it, it doesn't grow from the sense of it becomes all encompassing and then all you can think about is your wound and then you become even more wounded. It grows in the sense of your love for yourself grows because you're looking at your, you're all of who you are. You know, I find that our greatest fear in the world, like all of our external fears that we have are actually just fears of our own parts of ourselves. We actually have this conversation on the podcast that came out today with Kate and Amy. When we push a part of ourselves away, it's easy for us to become more fearful of the world. And I'm not talking about the legitimate external fears, right? I'm talking about internal fears. Okay, so, you know, when I started to understand, okay, so there's something deeply broken within me. I've got to start to uncover what this is. You know, I started going into coaching school. I was starting to coach women. And I believed, well, well, maybe this is only me, right? This is only me. I'm, I'm young. I was 21 when I started my business. Maybe, you know, once you become older and wiser, you kind of just grow out of feeling unworthy and you just move on. And then you become worthy. Maybe when you make the million billion dollars and you check off all the things on your bucket list, then you'll feel worthy and everything will come together and you'll live happily ever after, right? Like once you have everything that you possibly want, then you're going to feel happy forever. And yet these women came to me ranging from 30 to 50. These women kept coming, high achieving women, right? From the 30s to 50s coming to me saying, I've done it all. I've worked my ass off. I've gone back to school. I achieved top notch in my career. I bought the house. I have the partner. I have the children. I have all of the things. And yet there's still something missing. And yet I still don't feel like it's mine. I don't feel like my life is mine. I don't feel like I truly belong here. And so that made me wonder, okay, so it's not just me. And it's not just when we get certain things, then we suddenly feel like we belong. If there's a wound and we don't attend to it, it's not going to go away. It may not be um, take as great of a role. We may be this, able to distract ourselves and ignore ourselves and develop certain defensive mechanisms that we don't even know that it's there anymore. But just a couple sessions with people and I can uncover all of the ways that we develop 
um, personality traits that we think is who we are, but it's actually coming from a place of wanting to protect our tenderness because our wounds are very tender. They're our power source, but we just can't run away from them anymore. So if there's anything that you get from this Facebook Live, it's that running away doesn't work. Running away doesn't work. Now, whatever looking at the wound looks like for you is the right place for you. We are already on different levels. We're already at different levels. One way that I know that a wound is at play is if you feel like you're ready for the next level in your life, you feel like you're ready for the next level of money, you feel like you're ready for the next level of servitude, you feel like you're ready for the next level of whatever you want, and yet nothing keeps happening, like nothing keeps working, or you find yourself in the same patterns over and over and over again, that's an indication that there's something deeper at play. And that's great because that's an opportunity for you to start to look at it. I don't know, maybe it's just my Scorpio rising, Scorpio moon, but I'm obsessed with looking at this stuff because when we can look at it, we can change it. And if we keep ignoring it, it's just going to keep running our lives. Thank you for listening to Reclaim the Podcast. This podcast represents the opinions of Tae Sky and her guests to the show. The content of this podcast are for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for professional psychological, psychiatric, or medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified mental health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or mental disorder.